Today, let's talk about electrical power. Every electrical device has a power rating, which is usually measured in watts. But what does this number actually mean? Power is the rate at which work is done. Imagine you're pushing a heavy box from one place to another. The amount of work you do depends on the force you apply and the distance you push it. For example, if you push with a force of 5 newtons and move the box 1 meter, you've done 5 joules of work. Now, if you do this in 1 second, then the power you use is 5 joules per second, or watts. It means you're using 5 joules of energy every second to move the box. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell, so you never miss any update. In electrical systems, power represents the rate at which electrical energy is used by the device. Imagine we have a simple circuit with a battery that has a voltage of 1.5 volts, a cable, and a light bulb with a resistance of 3 ohms, all connected in a series. To understand the power in this circuit, we use a simple equation, power equals voltage times current. In this case, the current is 0.5 ampere. So, when we do the math, 1.5 volts times 0.5 ampere, we find that the power used by the light bulb is 0.75 watt. This means the bulb consumes 0.75 joules of energy every second. Now, let's dive deeper into the concept of electrical power and understand why power equals voltage times current. The concept of electrical power is similar to the earlier explanation on work you do when pushing the box, but instead of a physical box, we're dealing with a lot of tiny electrical charges measured in Coulomb. Each Coulomb consists of a huge number of electrons, about 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons. When we connect the battery to the circuit, an invisible force field called the electric field spreads throughout the circuit. This force field pushes the tiny electrical charges to move along the circuit. The strength of the electric field is measured in newtons per coulomb. Now, the electric field strength can be different in various parts of the circuit, depending on the materials. The cable has very low resistance and the charges move more easily, the electric field strength is lower as less force is required to push the charges. However, the light bulb has higher resistance, so the electric field strength is higher to apply more force to push the charges as they keep bumping into the atoms in the filament of light bulb. When the charges are moved through a distance in the circuit, more work is done to push them across the light bulb compared to the cable. We call this work done per coulomb of charge as voltage, or potential difference, measured in joule per coulomb or commonly referred to as volts. So, the voltage across the resistor is higher than the voltage across the cables. Very little work is done, or energy is lost as heat in the cable, because the charges don't bump into the atoms there as much compared to light bulb. For easier understanding, it is similar to moving boxes across different slopes. The gentle slope is like the cable, and the steeper slope is like the resistor. Stronger force is needed to push the box up the steeper slope, and the work done is higher. On the other hand, at the gentle slope, less force is required, and the work done is lower. Now, let's talk about current. Current is the rate of flow of electric charges through a circuit. It represents the number of electrical charges passing through a specific point in the circuit every second, measured in coulombs per second, or commonly known as ampere. In a series circuit, the current is the same all along the path. To obtain the power, we can multiply the voltage across each component, in joule per coulomb, or volts, by the current, in coulomb per second, or ampere. As a result, we obtain the number of joules of energy being consumed every second, or commonly known as watt. Now, here's an assumption made. The cable in the circuit consumes very little power because it has low resistance, and less work is done every second when moving the charges. So, we often neglect its work done, or voltage drop, and power consumption. On the other hand, the light bulb has the highest work done, or voltage drop across it, therefore, consuming most of the power. As the charges pass through the light bulb, 
they collide more often with the atoms and transfer their kinetic energy into light and heat energy, making the bulb glow. Therefore, to highlight again, the energy transferred to the light bulb every second is the power. Similarly, if the boxes are being pushed at the same speed across different slopes, just like current is the same across the series circuit. The highest power is being consumed when moving the box up the steeper slope, and less power is used at the gentle slope. So far, we've learned about the electric field, current, voltage, and power consumption. These concepts are essential in understanding how charges move through different components in the circuit, like the cable and light bulb, and how it affects the power consumption. By considering the voltage and current across each component, we can calculate how much power each part consumes. In the earlier example, we found out that the light bulb consumes 0.75 watts of power. Now, let's explore what happens when we double the voltage by adding another battery to the circuit. Do you think the power consumption will double as well? The answer is no. Well, when we double the voltage, the voltage across the light bulb also doubles, becoming 3 volts. As a result, the current flowing through the bulb also doubles, reaching 1 amp. So, the power consumption of the bulb actually increased significantly by 4 times, to 3 watts. This makes the bulb appear brighter. The power increase is proportional to the square of how many times the voltage is increased. However, we need to be cautious about the maximum power rating of the load we are using. If we exceed this limit, it could lead to excessive heat and possibly damage the components. On the other hand, let's see what happens if we double the resistance of the circuit by adding another bulb while keeping the original source voltage at 1.5 volts. According to Ohm's law, the current flowing through the circuit reduces by half to 0.25 amps. The voltage across each bulb also reduces to 0.75 volts. Therefore, the power consumption by each bulb decreases by 4 times, to approximate 0.1875 watts, making the bulbs appear dimmer. However, both bulbs together consume 0.375 watts. Therefore, the total power consumption of the circuit is only reduced by half. The power is inversely proportional to the resistance. To better understand how power changes in the circuit, we can use a mechanical analogy of a rotating water wheel. The voltage can be compared to the height of a reservoir, the current to the flow rate of water, and power to the rotation speed of a water wheel. For instance, if we increase the voltage in the circuit, the power consumption also increases. It's like raising the water level in the reservoir, which increases the potential energy and makes the current flow faster, causing the water wheel to rotate at a higher speed. On the contrary, if we increase the resistance in the circuit, the total power consumption decreases. It's similar to adding an obstruction to reduce the water flow rate while keeping the reservoir at original level. This would reduce the current flow and cause the water wheel to rotate at a lower speed. There are three main forms of electrical power, active power, reactive power, and apparent power. In a DC circuit, as we explored in the previous examples, the power is active power. Active power represents the net energy transferred in one positive direction from the power source to the electrical load. It's the actual power utilized by the load. In AC circuit with combination of various components like resistors, inductors, and capacitors. These components cause a phase difference between voltage and current. As a result, apart from active power, we encounter two more types of power, reactive power and apparent power. However, delving into these concepts is a bit more complex, and we'll explore them in detail in another video. That wraps up today's video on electrical power. I hope this video helped you better understand the concept of power equals voltage times current, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bells, and share it with others. Thank you.